Hi, I'm Bob. In the past four videos, we have solved uh, problems and uh, computer exercises on simple regression models. We often encounter the concept of unbiasedness. I will explain it in detail today. In this video, I will derive the unbiasedness of the OLS estimates under the zero conditional mean assumption. If the assumption is not satisfied, the OLS estimates will be biased. I will show you the omitted variable bias and its direction. First, let me show you the unbiasedness of the OLS estimates under the zero conditional mean assumption. What does unbiasedness mean? An estimator W of the population parameter theta is an unbiased estimator if its probability distribution has an expected value equal to the population parameter. For the unbiasedness of the OLS estimates, we need to prove that the expected value of the slope estimator and the intercept estimator conditional on x equal to the population parameters beta 1 and beta 0. Suppose the population relationship between y and x is y equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x plus mu. The average y bar can be written as beta 0 plus beta 1 times x bar plus mu bar. y is the outcome variable or dependent variable. x is the explanatory variable or independent variable. mu is the error term or disturbance. In video number 5, we have derived the OLS slope estimator beta 1 hat. We plug in the expressions of yi and y bar and write beta 1 hat in terms of the population coefficient and error terms. After some algebra, we can write beta hat 1 in two terms. the population parameter beta 1 plus a function of the explanatory variable x and the error term mu. Next, we find expected value of beta 1 hat conditional on x. We can treat the population coefficient and the x as fixed when they are conditional on x. We first simplify the numerator and eliminate the mu bar term. Then we write the numerator in two terms and try to show that both have zero expectations conditional on x. For the first term, we can take x out of the expectation. The critical condition is that the expectation of the error term conditional on x is zero, which is the zero conditional mean assumption. The second term also depends on the zero conditional mean assumption. If the assumption holds the expectation of the OLS estimator, beta 1 hat, conditional on x, equals the population parameter beta 1. In other words, if the zero conditional mean assumption holds, the OLS low estimator is unbiased. We can prove that the OLS intercept estimator is also unbiased. Recall that the intercept estimator equals y bar minus beta 1 hat times x bar. 
After substituting the expression of the y bar, we can write the beta zero hat as two terms. The first term is the population parameter beta zero. We need to show that the expectation of the second term conditional on x is zero. Using the result that beta one hat is an unbiased estimator of beta one. We can show that the expected value of beta zero hat equals beta zero. That is to say, the OLS intercept estimator beta zero hat is an unbiased estimator of the population parameter beta zero under the zero conditional mean assumption. I would also like to introduce the proof using matrix notation. Suppose we write the true relationship between x and y as y equals x times beta plus epsilon. Here, y, beta, and epsilon are column vectors. The explanatory variable x is in a matrix form with ones in its first column. I write an example with five observations. The matrix form is equivalent to the subscript expression because they represent the same data structure. Notice that the beta is a vector. For a simple regression model, beta is a two by one column vector containing beta zero and beta one. Using the matrix notation, we can prove the unbiasedness of the OLS estimators as follows. The OLS estimator beta hat in matrix form is x transpose x, the whole inverse times x transpose y. The trick to show it is unbiased is to replace y with its true relationship with x, and then write beta hat in two terms, beta plus a term of which we want to show the expectation is zero. The key is to use the zero conditional mean assumption to prove that it is zero. So the OLS estimates are unbiased. Next, let me show you what happens if the zero conditional mean assumption fails. If the unobserved factors contained in the error term mu affects y and correlated with x, it may result in a spurious correlation. That is, we find a relationship between y and x that is really due to the unobserved factors that affect y and also happen to be correlated with x. For example, in our computer exercise number 11 in the last video, we found that the students who own a personal computer do better in their GPA than the students without a PC. The former's GPA is 0 0.17 points higher than the latter on average. However, many unobserved factors in the error term affecting GPA are also correlated with whether the students have a PC. The students from wealthy families have more resources that help them succeed and get a higher GPA than the other students. 
and they are also more likely to own a personal computer. The positive association between GPA and PC ownership may be due to the student's family background. We call it the omitted variable bias. To show the omitted variable bias, I use the matrix form. Suppose the true population relationship is y equals beta 1 times x1 plus beta 2 times x2 plus epsilon. We assume that the error term epsilon satisfies the zero conditional mean assumption. That is, it's not correlated with x1 and x2. Now, because we only observe x1 and fit a simple regression of y on x1, the new error term mu contains the original error term epsilon and the unobserved factor x2. Next, we prove that the OLS estimates are biased when x2 is omitted from the model. We first write down the OLS estimator in matrix form from the regression of y on only x1. Beta hat 1 equals x1 transpose x1 the whole inverse times x1 transpose y. Then we replace the outcome variable y with its true relationship with x1 and x2. There are three terms. When we take the expectation of beta hat 1, we find that the last term is 0 because of the zero conditional mean assumption. So we focus on the first two terms. The first term is beta 1. The second term is the omitted variable bias. It is beta 2 times an expression of x1 and x2. That expression is the sample covariance between x1 and x2 over the sample variance of x1. We can also see it as the OLS estimator from the regression of x2 on x1. It has the same sign as the covariance between x1 and x2. Now, we know that the omitted variable bias depends on two things, beta 2 and the covariance between x1 and x2. The following four cases summarize the direction of the bias. If beta 2 and the covariance have the same sign, there will be an upward bias. The OLS estimate is higher than the true value. If beta 2 and the covariance have opposite signs, there will be a downward bias. The OLS estimate is lower than the true value. In the GPA and PC example, GPA is Y and PC ownership is X1. We can see the family income as X2. Family income is omitted from the model. Generally speaking, family income has a positive effect on GPA. So beta 2 is positive. Family income is also positively related to whether the student can own a PC, so the covariance between x1 and x2 is also positive. As a result, the bias falls in case 1. The OLS estimate from the simple regression is upward biased. On average, the PC effect on GPA is overrated.
Today, we have learned the unbiasedness of the ORS estimates under the zero conditional mean assumption. When the assumption fails, that is, when the unobserved factors contained in the error term are correlated with the explanatory variable, or equivalently, the covariance between them is not zero. Then the ORS estimates are no longer unbiased. They have the omitted variable bias. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.